Good morning. Welcome to GSC Live Mornings. Today is Wednesday, May 13th, day 61 in this stay-at-home time together. I woke up this morning missing our church. Uh, more specifically, the church building. Now, I confess, I haven't felt that in all of these 60 days until today. Now, yes, I have missed the church, but I realize what I miss is all of you, the people who are the church. This morning, I woke up missing the church building. Um, so, when I looked in the cupboard this morning, I pulled out this cup. You've seen it before. It's a Dunn County Pottery Cup made in Dunn County, Wisconsin, where we lived for 19 years and were members of Our Savior's Lutheran Church, a church a congregation and a church building where uh, Cindy and I raised our children. Um, and uh, in many ways where I was raised in the faith as well. This is the church that supported me through seminary. It's the church building in which I was ordained, uh, a church that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, this morning I woke up missing church buildings. The building I serve right now, this particular building, the church building in Montevideo, Salem Lutheran, the church building in Blooming Prairie, First Lutheran Church in Blooming Prairie, um, and the many other church buildings that I've had the privilege of, of being in and worshiping in and sometimes preaching in. Um, and then I take a look at uh, Christ in her home and today, and, um, you know, they're talking about church buildings. So I'm going to jump over and read a little bit from Psalm 102. Uh, now, before I read, I'm not going to read all of it. I'm just going to read a few verses. But if you're feeling a little down in this stay-at-home time, I encourage you to read Psalm 102. Um, it, it'll make you feel a little better because the writer of this psalm seems to have it worse than we do right now. But uh, he's talking about life and longing and distress. And here are a few words about the buildings, the temple. You will rise up and have compassion on Zion, O God, for it is time to favor it. The appointed time has come, for your servants hold its stones dear and have pity on its dust. Long ago you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you endure. They will all wear out like a garment. You change them like clothing, and they pass away. But you are the same. Your years have no end. I'm going to read from Christ in her home. Many of you uh, probably read this already this morning. This writer writes, We can imagine the psalmist holding one of the stones of the temple in Jerusalem while praying for God's compassion and deliverance. To the people of Israel, the temple was literally God's house a holy vessel, the place where God promised to show up for them. It's not idolatrous to hold dear the places where God's people gather. Yes, our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, but God also delights to inhabit the four walls inside which water is poured, words are spoken, bread and wine are served, and music and color reflect the order and beauty of God's presence. From here, we are sent out to carry Christ's love to all people. We are on an extended sending, my friends. I'm reminded of something that uh, the writer and columnist George Will wrote uh, many years ago, a little over 20 years ago, and it was printed um, the back page of Newsweek magazine. And uh, he was reflecting on the tensions between uh, Jews and Muslims over the right to occupy Jerusalem. It's a tension that's been going on a long time. It continues to this day. Uh, and there's a great deal of tension over 
the actual site of the temple in Jerusalem, which is not there anymore except for its foundation. And uh, for those of you who um, maybe don't recall, um, uh, Islam has built its temple, the dome, uh, on the Jerusalem temple's foundation. So there's a fair amount of contention over Jerusalem and specifically this space. Whose space is it? Uh, is it uh, God's people of Israel uh, as the Jews or God's people um, Islam? And uh, George Will was reflecting on, okay, this tension, but maybe we in America who are largely Christian in nature don't quite understand that tension and why. Um, he purported, and I agree, that the temple for us as Christians, as followers of Christ, has moved. It's no longer limited to a geographical space, that space called Jerusalem, that place in that part of the world or on that particular hill or on that particular foundation. Yes, we love it. We cherish the holy city. But God is no longer defined just by space. God is no longer confined to the temples, the, the literal temples that we build. God is not confined to our church buildings. Now we all know that, that God is on the loose in the world and God is everywhere. Um, but allow that to speak to us in these times when we miss our church buildings. That that's where we go, we worship God, but then pretty quickly we are sent out into the world. And uh, for today, I'm gonna think on this thought, that this, this uh, stay at home time together, this time where we're not going back into our church buildings because of the dangers with this virus, that we're on an extended sending out into the world. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.